guys what's up okay so today we're taking it back to the not so basics okay because there's nothing basic about this beat right here I'm gonna be showing you guys step by step by step exactly how I do my favorite beat face routine it's gonna accentuate your features it's going to still look very smooth and natural in its own way and even if you're a beginner I'm taking it super slow so that you guys can see why everything works how it's gonna work for you how you can use these techniques on yourself so if you want to see how I get this look go ahead and keep on watching all right so let's go ahead and get started I am a firm believer that skincare is probably the most important part of your makeup routine I live by that I stand by that so if you're somebody who struggles with feeling like you have a lot of texture when you're putting your makeup on that may be part of the issue because think about it, you go to sleep at night you have all that funk all over your face. In the morning you wake up, it's just like, I swear to you, when you do skincare before you do your makeup, it goes on so smoothly. Moisturize really, really well before you put your foundation on. Even more important than primer. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of these skincare products that I've been using recently to prep my skin before I do my makeup. I wanna say a huge thank you to Function of Beauty for sponsoring today's video. If you aren't familiar with Function of Beauty, it is a completely personalized skincare routine made just for you. So if you can see on these products right here, like it says Function of Ashley. Whether you're new to skincare or you've been doing skincare forever, you know it can take a while to get your perfect routine going. So this kind of takes a lot of the guesswork out of it for you. You do a short little quiz on their website and of course everything's gonna be linked down below in the description and it's going to match you with your perfect products. I basically have combination skin but teetering way more towards dry. I wear a lot of full coverage makeup and I have some sensitivity. That is why I decided to get all of my products unfragranced. We got the double headbands going right now because this one is actually gonna absorb any water or moisture product. So I chose the Custom Jelly Cleanser. It's definitely super gentle on the skin. This is something I would recommend for your morning routine. This is a non-lathering formula. Non-lathering cleansers are actually the best and they will not feel like they're stripping your skin at all. Then I got this nourishing serum and it can be used day or night. This is the custom cream moisturizer. It's super rich, super thick, perfect for my dry skin. I use this morning and night. So you guys would definitely recommend to any skin type because there are literally over 3 billion different combinations that you could get from here. Like these are really, really customized. Plus they are vegan and cruelty free and just very clean overall. All in all, my skin's been feeling very hydrated, smooth and healthy. So definitely hit that description link to check them out. You thought we were done with skincare? No. Cannot go out without SPF. Can never go out without SPF. SPF is so important. Protect that skin. And it's not gonna affect the way that your makeup wears in a negative way. Actually, this one's super hydrating. I used to kind of go back and forth on whether I preferred brows first or brows last. I was always a brows last girl, and then I became a brows first girl whenever, I don't know, I feel like brows first became very popular. And now I think maybe I'm back to a brows last girl. Which which team are you? Are you team brows first or team brows last? I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my foundation and my complexion first. This is the Fenty Hydrating Longwear Foundation. I'm using the shade 230. I used the shade 260 the other day and it looked a little bit too deep. So I was like, all right, let's dial it back a little bit. My general rule is if you want airbrushed, use a brush. If you want skin-like, use a sponge. I'm using this for my contour, but you could go in with a brush as small as this and really just work that into the skin. It looks gorgeous, it looks airbrushed, and it's applying a good amount of product while still looking smooth. Circular motions, take it down to the neck a little bit. And if you know your ears are gonna show, take it over to the ears, I swear. But if you want that combo, airbrushed and skin-like finish, just finish it off with the sponge. And I do like to go in with a little bit of extra coverage underneath the eyes with my foundation. It definitely does depend on what foundation you're using, but I feel like foundation does not crease the way that concealer does. I'm putting coverage with my foundation so I don't have to use as much concealer. And you're probably gonna be thinking, didn't you just say you wanted to go in really, really light with concealer and you're gonna plot two concealers? Yes, yes I am. I am gonna do that. First things first, I'm gonna take the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. It is a nice like medium coverage. It's not too matte, not too dewy. Somewhere in the middle, I would say. And I'm gonna take that because it's a lot closer to my skin tone. And I'm going to just apply that where I actually have under eye circles. Highly, highly, highly recommend using a brush. This one is by Real Techniques, but I found out that it was actually limited edition. So I'm sure they have something similar. This is the 402 brush, but it was from like a specific collection. so. I don't know, but I highly recommend using a brush for concealer. Once again, it's the same thing. Sponge is skin-like, 
and brush is like airbrush. So if you want to airbrush under eye, this is it. It's gonna give you maximum coverage. You don't lose any of the product on your sponge. As long as you're patting it in really nicely, it's not going to, you know, smudge all over the place. You can also do like a nice little blend. Then we're gonna go in with our brightening concealer. So this one is by Iconic London. This is their seamless concealer. And this one, I am going to put a nice little triangle here. I'm gonna do a little upward motion by the eye. Didn't need to do that much, but we've already done it. So this one's super, super creamy. So even if you use quite a bit, honestly, it's all gonna blend in. So the reason why you go in with a brighter shade for your concealer is because you're wanting to bring that part out. That's gonna look more pronounced. It's gonna kind of bring that to the forefront. It's just an illusion. You know what I'm saying? It's just an illusion. So that's the same reason why you don't use lighter concealer for things like pimples because that's just gonna make it look boop, like it's sticking out even more. But you can use lighter concealer for things like smile lines because it's going to give it a filled in effect, basically. You can let that sit for just a sec. You don't need to blend it in right away. This will sit very nicely on the skin. Jackiana does it, so what Jackiana says goes. While that sits for just a second, I'm gonna talk contour. So this is the Fenty Beauty Matchstick in the shade Mocha. It might look quite deep when you look at it in the tube, but once you put it on, you blend it, it is the perfect contour shade. Of course, it depends on what skin tone you have. We know Fenty, they're known for their shade range. There's a huge assortment of different shades that you can use. So I get a lot of questions about this. Like, is this beginner friendly? Is it user friendly? How do I use it? This on its own, might be a little bit dry for you. If you don't moisturize or if you have dry skin or use a super matte foundation that's not creamy and doesn't feel like, you know, blendable, it might go on a little bit dry for you. So just to the touch, it feels a bit dry, but it goes on so smooth. And on the back of my hand, I already have a little bit of foundation. You can see it just kind of like, it just glides on. And I like to go quite high because this is going to elevate those cheekbones. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna apply this just to one side real quick. And then I'm gonna show you what it is going to look like. I'm just hit a little nose contour. And we're gonna go in and fix this, but this is just gonna give us like a good guideline. I always, always, always make sure that I put a line right here. And I'll talk more about that in just a second. See where my cheekbones are? You might think, okay, let me start here. No. For somebody like me who has more chubby cheeks and doesn't have like really prominent cheekbones, I want to go as high as I can to really make that face You know what I'm saying? So instead of just sucking your cheeks in like this and doing that, I'm telling you go above, like right where you can feel that bone, right there. And it's gonna pull that face with no surgery. All you gotta pay for is a contour stick. I do like to blend my contour before I blend my concealer, but it doesn't really matter, I guess. I just feel like it looks a lot more seamless that way because any place where you feel like the contour has gone too high, that concealer is just gonna bring it back a notch. And see, even though we let that concealer sit, it's still looking really nice. Can you just kind of see where that gives us that illusion, magic. I posted some throwback pictures of me from high school and a lot of people said, oh my gosh, like, did you get filler done in your smile lines or anything because they look a lot less prominent than they used to. And I'm telling you guys, it's this. It's putting concealer right here. Like 10 years later, it is possible to look younger. I'm just gonna go in with a nice little blending brush. This is the Sephora Blending Crease Brush. Not what we're using for, but that's okay. And I go in just like I'm blending out an eyeshadow. And like Beyonce's makeup artist says, blend it into the brow. And that's one thing that I think has also urged me to do brows last is because I really do love the look of putting that bronzer or that contour into your brow bone. And if you already have brows on sometimes, it'll, you know, move them around a little bit. And I'm personally a layering kind of girl, so I like to do layers in between. So if you wanna go in with a setting spray, this is the new Professional from Benefit. It's supposed to be a long lasting makeup setting spray and it is by the Professional line, so it's supposed to soften like the look of pores. 
so it's just a fine mist this one's really new i've actually only tried it maybe once so still getting used to it but i definitely do recommend doing layers so after you've done your whole complexion before you do powder if you're gonna have a mask on you want to make sure that that's staying put very few makeup products bring me as much joy as a blush does so this is the new rare beauty nearly rose blush i like my blush to show up i want it to be able to be seen and heard everything and i absolutely love cream blushes i feel like this is a little bit of a trend going on i love cream products that's just me i'm team cream i'm gonna go in with this anastasia beverly hills a7 brush i feel like this is absolutely perfect for doing blush and sometimes i'll like brush a little bit on the back of my hand if i feel like i got too much product but i'm just gonna go in same thing going in nice and high start up at the temple really softly and then go towards the apple of the cheeks that was one of my biggest mistakes when i was younger is that i would pack and nothing is a mistake really if you're into a certain look then you rock that look okay i'm just giving you what i feel like will accentuate certain features but if you love the look of blush all over the cheek and do whatever you have fun with it and you do you i really was like just packing it on it was like all over here all over here and it was making my face look so much fuller than it already was and giving me absolutely zero bone structure at all like nothing like there was no it was like bloop, bloop, there was no bones in there okay and yes eventually i do go in with powder products don't worry i'm gonna set some things i'm using the abh vanilla powder and this powder like i've talked about it before it is very thick in a good way and I like to just take a little bit of a fluffier brush, but similar to the one that we use for our concealer. And I just like to pat that on. I don't really bake because like I said, I do have dry under eyes. And so if like I didn't get a lot of sleep the night before or I didn't moisturize, then I will look crusty. Like I said, this is going to help with those smile lines. We want them to be nice and matte and a little bit bright. So that way they're filled in. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with the KVD Shade and Light Palette. Mine's a little bit messy, so just ignore that. So I'm gonna take this like medium shade here and I'm just gonna go ahead and take that on this nice big brush right here. This is the Real Techniques 419. Also, I'm not sure if it's limited edition. I'll have to check. Just gonna go around the face. This is gonna add a little bit of depth, a little bit of warmth, but because it is so nice and fluffy, it's gonna be blended in with the skin. It's not gonna be sitting on top and adding too much like crazy lines or anything. You can also go in jawline. So as you can see, I have like a more ball shaped nose at the end. That's just the way that my nose is, which is fine. But I like to look like I have a little bit more of a nose tip you know where you have like a little boop you have a little you have a little button at the top so what i do is i take a tiny little brush this is actually a lip brush i take the same contour shade and i'm just gonna add a little bit extra here and the warmth of your fingers will blend that in perfectly I'm just a tiny little boop. and it's not too harsh you might be thinking well okay what does it look like when you go out in public it looks cute I'm going to go in with the lighter, more cool tone shade from the KVD Beauty Contour Palette. And I don't like to go in with banana personally. It is just a little harsh for me. This nice like light beige color really does it for me. And I'm just going to carve the side of the nose. And it's going to go just a little bit under the eye, but barely. And I feel like that really helps brighten the whole face. Finally, we're gonna pop on some brows. So why I love doing brows last as well, I'm like, I feel like I'm talking about this a lot. I'm definitely taking a certain take on the matter. I feel like once all of your base and all of your makeup is pretty much already on, everything looks so good that you don't have to do very much to your brows. When you do them first, sometimes you like overcompensate because like you're just starting out with your face and you're like, you know, let me make these absolutely perfect. Let me make them gorgeous. Let me make them carved. But honestly, once you have the full face on and you get the full effect, it's like, you know what, brush them up, add some color, and we're good. So this is the Refi Beauty Brow Gel. This has been my absolute go-to. I am in love with this. I love their brow pencils as well, but if I'm going really effortless, I also love this like little brow pomade. So this is in the darkest shade right here, and it has a little brush. You just kind of like unscrew it, 
and the product is right here in the cap. I know this seems like a small amount of product, but literally I've gone through like barely any of it at all so far. So a little goes a long way. You see that difference? Just a little bit of color goes a long way. Time to move on to the eyes. I definitely have some very heavy opinions on what I like to do with my eye looks. So I'm gonna be taking the Makeup by Mario, the Perfect Brown Eye Pencil. This is literally called the Perfect Brown. That's the shade it's in, and it is the Perfect Brown. Trust me. So what I like to do is just extend this out a bit. And I just love the look of a very lightweight little wing that looks super effortless and super cute. I'm into it. And it also comes with this little brush. I've talked about this many times before, but I still can't get over it. It is the perfect little brush. It can really be that easy. You don't have to go in with a liquid liner if you're like not used to doing liquid liner or if you just don't like to do it. You can literally just go in with a simple pencil. Look at that. Like, look how quick that is, okay? This is absolutely like something that's been part of my go-to makeup routine for months and months and months now. So I basically like to go in a nice little diagonal line here straight across. So if I'm here, then I'm gonna wanna end right here. And then for lashes, I recently tried this little bit bougie, but I tried this Givenchy base mascara. And so basically it is just like, you know, your base mascara if you've used base mascaras before. I know L'Oreal used to have one like this where it was like double-sided. One side had like the white base mascara and the other side had the actual mascara and it really, really worked. especially focusing on the very tips of the lashes because a lot of these are like fiber mascara so they're going to build on top of each other and basically you're building yourself like a little fake lash i'm just going over with this iconic london i think this is the one that i've actually been using though this is the monsieur big lancome lash mascara okay this might be it yeah i think that iconic one is kind of drying up a little bit Okay, so I'm gonna show you very quickly how I do my lashes, how I like to wear them. I did a little video about this on Instagram, but if you don't follow me there, I mean like, go follow me. These are just some simple Ardell faux mink lashes. You can get them at Target, very simple, very easy. And I'm just gonna show you on a nice, simple pair of wispy lashes, how you can make them look amazing. Let me show you on here why it's nice and easy to see. So the lash, I'm gonna cut probably about here. So a little bit less than half, I wouldn't say exactly a third, but a little bit less than half. And I'm gonna use the shorter side. And that's because if you go in with just straight up the long side and your eyelashes are not that long, look, imagine me. If you go in with the long side, it's going to look crazy harsh because your regular lashes are short and then these are just gonna be super long out of nowhere. So this way they taper in, they're gonna start off from your shorter part of your lashes to getting a little bit longer and they're gonna help that wing really pop. And I like to just take my lash and kind of bend it around a little bit, make sure it's gonna fit my eye shape. I'm gonna take a little bit of this Velour Lash Glue. If you're looking for an affordable lash glue, I also really love the Kiss Formaldehyde and Latex Free one, which is gonna be like for sensitive eyes. And the most important tip for lashes is to let the glue dry down a bit so it's nice and sticky and tacky and not super, super wet because it's just gonna slide all over the eye and it's gonna make a mess. I'm just gonna put it right there. Right above the lash line. I feel like my favorite way to do the lashes and to make them stay is to literally just pop them on and don't touch it for a minute. Like just leave it there, it will dry down and then you can go in and kind of like, you know, pinch it with the regular lashes so it's on there really, really smooth. Now that our lashes are definitely nice and glued on, I'm just gonna pinch. Definitely be careful with this because you got tweezers up in your eyeball. Scary. 
And that is how the lashes look. Definitely my favorite way to do them, plus it's super comfy as compared to a lash that goes all the way across your entire lash line. So same as the rest of the face, the lips are also all about shadowing. So you don't have to take it the extra mile if you don't want to, but I'm telling you, this will add a nice little shadow and give your lips a more prominent look. Then we all know my ride or die, NYX Sandstorm. Basically this is the exact same effect as the concha that we just did as far as color goes. You're going to want something that's very, very similar to your actual contour shade because that's gonna be basically your perfect lip liner color. And to top it all off, just going with your favorite gloss. This one is by Rare Beauty. This is in the shade Nearly Neutral. And as you can tell, I love brown, earthy tones. This shade is absolutely stunning. Oh my gosh, I love the way it goes on. It's like sheer, but it adds such a beautiful tint to the lips. The perfect creaminess and sheen. One more little spray. I'm tasting it a little bit. I love the way that feels because it's so refreshing for me. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below in the comments or if there's any other like step-by-step -step tutorials that you'd like me to do, maybe go more in depth with, like a super in-depth lip tutorial or super in-depth lash tutorial or Whatever you'd like to see me do, just let me know down below in the comments. Do not forget to like this video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.